How's it going everybody? It's Razine here for Astrophotography. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Deep Sky Stacker to get your first images stacked. Now, this is going to be under the assumption that you are completely new and you've just downloaded DSS because you've seen people talking about it. And you know that you don't even know what the heck people are really on about when it means stacking. So this video is for the beginner. If you already know DSS and you're looking for more in-depth things about it, this ain't the video for you. So, what is Deep Sky Stacker? Deep Sky Stacker is a free piece of software which astrophotographers use to stack their images of astrophotography targets. So you may already know that you take lots of different sub-exposures. You take 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pictures, for example, of the same target, and then you stack them together. The art of stacking them, layer on layer on layer on layer on layer on them, increases what is known as the signal to noise ratio, SNR. And that's all about making sure that we can push our data further. It doesn't make things that, you know, it doesn't mean that you can pull out fine detail that wasn't already there. You have to have captured the data, but it means that you can push it further in editing and still have a decent looking photo at the end of it. If you don't have enough data, to stack, your pictures will look all grainy and noisy and not as good. So the art of stacking is basically breaking one extremely long exposure, say an hour, down into 12 five minute pictures, for example, like that, or 30 two minute photos. They all add up to one hour of integration time, but they're in separate images and the art of stacking combines those pictures together with calibration frames to make a better image than the sum of its parts okay that is stacking in a nutshell basically lots of photos laid on top of each other stacked on top of each other like that and also before we get started just a couple of things i'm going to point you to here in options first of all we go to settings and in stacking settings i want you to select mosaic mode now the reason i'm asking for mosaic mode right standard mode if we look at the picture here it's one rectangle so if this is one photo, and that's one photo, and that's one photo, the image we'll have at the end is that bit there, really. Just that one bit of the galaxy in this example. Because it makes everything reference to the reference frame. The reference frame being one photo of the lot of all the light frames that Deep Sky Stacker or you have selected as the anchor, basically. So. You choose one photo and say, that is what I want everything else matched to. And Deep Sky Stack will say, Roger that, and it will match everything to that one reference frame. But in this case, this bit here would have more noise in it, and that bit there would have more noise in it because the way it's stacked. So mosaic mode is, for example, if your targeting is slightly off, say you've shot over a couple of nights, and you know, you've got one photo here because you're, you didn't get right, right back at the same coordinates. I've done that several times and one here and one here, it will actually stack them all together and it will give you this big picture like this where you can then chop and change whatever you want. I use mosaic mode, I think it's better. Ignore drizzling, don't even touch that at the minute. Go to output and you want to make sure that it's creating an output file in whatever folder you know where it is. Because after the stacking process, that's where it puts your picture, okay? And you want a temporary folder file where it can do its work, okay? So this is just where my astro photos are in general. You need one of these. If you don't have both of these set, when Deep Sky Stack has finished its thing, doing its thing, it will just flash at you and there won't be no photo for you to save. So if you've come across this before, that's probably what's happening. Okay, we're gonna press okay now. So to begin the stacking process, we need to load in our light frames. So in Deep Sky Stacker, you've gone out and you've took your photos, right? You've gone out and bang, you're really excited, you've took your photos of whatever it is you've done, and here's Deep Sky Stacker. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to add our light frames. The light frames are those frames of the thing that you photographed, right? And we add them to Deep Sky Stacker. So we're gonna to go to Open Picture Files, and this is my light frames. These are my light frames. Now, the one I'm using in this example was shot with a dedicated astronomy camera. So there is a couple of differences here, I'll point them out. First of all, I can't see an image preview. If you'd shot with a DSLR and you have like CR2 files from a Canon, you'd see a little picture preview of it there. Don't worry too much about it, it's not going to make a difference. 
in this example. You either click and drag and select everything, or you can click, press shift and click the other one. And then we go down and press open. And this is gonna load your light frames into Deep Sky Stacker. And then press check all. So now we've got 33 light frames, have all checked. And let's run through these real fast. Path is obvious, that's where it is on the computer. File name, type light frame. That refers to up here where we've got light, dark, flat, bias, etc. Filter probably won't say anything unless you've had programs that bake the filter into the metadata of the image, such as probably the ASI Air Pro would do that. Score, it's a score that Deep Sky Stacker has given it when it looks at things like star sizes, clarity of the image, make sure they're not trailing, etc., like that, that is happy, that this star is nice and round, for example, up in the corner, it's happy with that. DX, DY, don't know, angle is of the rotation of it. It needs to kind of assess the photos first. Date and time of image capture. Size of the image, so that's the image resolution. CFA stands for color filter array. Again, this is because this is a dedicated color camera. You don't really have to worry about that too much with a DSLR. Depth is the bit depth of the image. This is gray 16 bit, again, because of the because of how a dedicated camera is, they are great images. They need to be debayed, where basically the program looks at it and adds color in, let's say. Info. Again, in this case, it's just telling me that it's a FITS file from an ASI 533MC Pro. ISO gain, ISO in the DSLR camera, gain in the dedicated camera. Exposure time, aperture, this would be populated if you'd use like a camera lens, for example, let's say 3.5, 4.6, 5.6, etc., like that. Full width, half medium is basically the focus. It's assessing focus. The lower this number, generally the better, but it, it does vary naturally. So it looks at the stars, make sure they're in focus, etc., like that. Number of stars detected and the background sky brightness. Generally, I look at making sure that the FHA, FWHM is okay and that the score is high. And that when you end up putting calibration files in that they should match ISO and gain, etc., like that. So if you've done a DSLR image and you've just ran inside, because I'm guessing you've, you've been outside, it's now 3 a.m., you've packed up, you ran inside, you're really excited, you've thrown your pictures into DSS, you've put your lights in, and now you're about to press stack checked photos. This is great, it's gonna moan at you because it hasn't got any offset dark or flats, We'll get on that to a moment. And now we're gonna let it do its thing. And here we go. Now that Deep Sky Stacker is finished doing its thing, here is a preview of your image. Now, again, if this was a DSLR photo, this would probably be much brighter because just of the differences it is. Now, it might be tempting to play around with these sliders down here to change the color of the image and things like that. But really, but really, I just leave this alone because I don't see any point of doing any editing in DSS here. Another thing you might have noticed is if you go to the recommended settings, it's going to ask you to do a few things. Usually these are pretty good shouts and you can pay attention to them. And for example, this looks really gray, so we could use this per channel background calibration and we'll see what the difference looks like. And we can see down here now that it's now it's assessed the pictures and it's worked everything out. It's given them uh, coordinate values and angle values and things like that. So it's kind of figured out where each image is and how it needs to be moved. And again, here's our stacked image. Don't worry too much about mine. Again, like I said before, it's because it's a dedicated camera. And from here, we're now gonna to go to processing and save picture to file. And this is where you'll then name it. Save it as a tip 16 bits, because that's the best way to edit from a DSS photo. I can't speak. Save it as a TIFF image at 16 bit CH. That's the best way I found to edit these afterwards. And here is that same stacked image that we've just done in Photoshop after a few initial tweaks. Okay, I've done nothing fancy here, just a few curved stretches. I've got tutorials about editing astrophoto is already on my channel. You'll find them in the corner or just have a poke around looking for whatever system you use, Affinity, Photoshop, or GIMP. So this is that. This is just light frames stacked together. Okay, brilliant. That is your first astrophoto stacked, done and dusted. However, what about all these dark, flat, dark flats and offset bias images? 
So dark images basically are images of the same exposure time and the same camera temperature, but with the lens cap on. So you have a really just literally a black, flat, dark image. And what that is, is helps reduce noise of the photo. Noise has been that nasty grain, like this here, that's, that's noise right there. So to add dark frames, it's very similar. We kind of follow the same procedure as for adding the light frames. We go to dark files, step up, go find our darks. In this case, again, because it's a, it's a dedicated camera, they are slightly different. With the DSLR, dark frames can be a little bit more tricky because you need to take them at the same temperature. So let me show you a dark here. This is a dark frame. So as you key, number of stars, not applicable. Score, not applicable, because there's no stars to assess. This is just the dark current of the camera. It's just noise subtraction of the camera. Flat files are special calibration files we take against a flat light source with the telescope. And it's for assessing if there's any uneven light in the picture, say if there was a gradient in this corner, but not down this corner, it, it will see that and try to help fix that. Any dust on the camera lens or, any, or on, the, on the telescope or on the camera sensor or anything like that, it will, it will help get rid of the dust bunnies, they're called little black splotches or weird splotches on your light frames. It will help correct for those, not perfect. And vignetting where you've got a bit dark in the corners, it will help correct for those as well. So similar story, we go to the flat frames, step up, find your flats, and add your flats. Of course, another way to add your files is if you go to your Explorer and navigate to your folder, you can just click and drag, select them and pull them into Deep Sky Stacker. It'll ask you what they are. In this case, these are dark flat files, they're in there. So dark flats do a very similar thing to what dark frames do for light frames, okay? They help remove any noise current or any kind of nasty things after your flat frame. If you're using a DSLR, you could use dark flats. You'd probably end up using offset bias frames though, which are images shot with the camera with the lens cap on, doesn't have to be attached to the telescope, so it's just body cap on, for example, at the fastest shutter speed your camera is capable of, be it one over 4,000, one over 8,000, whatever. You just rack off a load of those, da -da 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 -da, get a load of those ready, put them in. That helps reduce, I believe it's read noise out of the camera. Again, don't worry too much about what read noise is, just it is best practice to use calibration frames in the majority of cases. As a beginner, I will recommend you to use your calibration frames. All right, I have a video on how to take flat frames. Dark frames are pretty self-explanatory, like I mentioned, you put the cap, cap on and shoot them. Usually with the DSLR, you do it at the end of your session before you come in for the night and offset bias frames, I've just told you how to take them. They are so easy. There is a, in the Deep Sky Stacker manual, there is an explanation of how to take these. So now we look down here, we've got a full complement of lights and calibration frames. We've got 33 light frames, 50 of calibration frames each. This is a flat frame. You can see what it is like. Let's make it a little bit brighter. So that's what a flat frame looks like. And obviously a dark flat is just black. Now when we go to stack check pictures, it's going to tell us, yep, yeah, okay, it's happy. There's no offset frames because I didn't take any. You don't generally take any with a dedicated astronomy camera in most cases. And we can, again, we can go to the recommended settings. Ignore these because we're not doing hydrogen alpha. And again, usually what, it, what the examples it gives you usually are pretty solid. And we're just going to let that stack. We'll come back to it. So with the DSLR, again, you're going to load your light frames in and they look slightly different because of a DSLR, just how it deals and how it handles files differently. A DSLR is slightly different because a camera will, a, a DSLR camera will do a bit of processing to the photos to begin with. So when you're looking at it in your Explorer, you can see a preview. When you look at it in Deep Sky Stacker, it looks like you can actually see the photo itself and by the end of the stacking process, you can still see a bit more. And also when you go into the editing, pictures out of a dedicated camera and pictures out of a DSLR camera out of stacking do look slightly different. So this is what it looks, a, de a dedicated camera looks like outside of stacking. 
we can't really see anything. We can see the stars and that's about it. But again, if we go into Photoshop, here we are in Photoshop, but if we do a couple of quick edits, this is what this one looks like outside with all the calibration frames. If we look in here, we can see that the noise is generally a lot better. Like it's much cleaner than the last picture because of the dark frames. And if there was any vignetting or anything like that, the flat frames would have helped with that. It is a lot more red. As you can see, it's far more red than the last one. And if that's the case, you'd want to go back into Deep Sky Stacker, go into your recommended settings and try, you know, a different background calibration. So you could use the per channel background calibration instead. So let's do that. Let's see what it looks like outside of stacking now. And again, here's this one now after a few initial edits as well. Personally, for this one, I found the RGB background calibration to be better. A lot of time it's down to experimenting. So that is a rough guide on how to get your first pictures sorted in Deep Sky Stacker. Whether you've got data from a dedicated camera, maybe you've got something from a friend or from someone else's data set, or if it's your own DSLR data, I've shown you the differences between the two but that is a basic guide to using Deep Sky Stacker. Hope you found this video useful. Consider subscribing for more content such as this. And in the meantime, as always, clear skies, everyone. Keep looking up. Keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.